It's the Community Ties Program with Alex Micas on Tiger Country 97.5 WTGR. 11-11 is your time. Scott Ward in for Alex Micas once again. Uh, he's on vacation as we get you ready for your Community Ties Program. Great way to catch up with uh, nonprofit organizations and events coming up in the community. And again, uh, this morning we are joined uh, with the folks at the uh, Bears Mill. And this morning, our guest, uh, Mary Niekamp. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Scott. How are you? I'm great. And you? Good. Good. Warm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's better than cold. I'll take that. I will take that any day. <laughs> well, how's things been going for Bears Mill? Going good. Ever since spring finally got here, things have been picking up. Um, had to remind everyone today that when it's cold outside, it's cold at Bears Mill. And when it's hot outside, it's hot at Bears Mill. Um, people are asking about air conditioning. It's like, nope, built in 1849, and we try to to stay historically correct, so we do not have air conditioning. So just a reminder, it's warm at Bears Mill, too. (laughs) Well, you know, back in October, you uh, had the sale of Bears Mill. Um, How have things been going since then, and what's kind of been the process? A lot of strategy. Um, Like you said, the friends were able to acquire Bears Mill from Terry and Julie Clark, who had owned the mill for 30 years. And we have been focused on board development. At the end of 2013, we only had four or five board members. We're now up to nine or ten. So we're working to get our board developed, and then we are moving on with strategic planning so that we can lay out the future for Bears Mill and where we want to go to keep it in the community. And along with that, um, planning some new programs and events and developing committees and just trying to get ourselves organized and focused. So things slowly kind of sound like are on the uprise. Very much so, yes. Oh, good. Uh, Good to hear things like that uh, to really help the uh, community. Um, You know, you mentioned the warmer temperatures, and uh, folks really like to come out during the warmer temperatures to see see what Bears Mill is all about. Right. Um, Right now we're focused on tourism. I mean, once the races start with Eldora, once the sun starts shining, people start hitting Dark County, um, a lot of tour groups coming out. We have both self-guided touring on Saturdays. You can come out at 2 o'clock in the afternoon for tours with Terry Clark. He'll do uh, grinding demonstrations and tours of the four-storied mill. And then there's just people that like to come out and see the nature. You can take walks all over the 35 acres of property, look at the critters on the property, go back to the dam and the overlook, um, picnic on the grounds. We encourage all of that a lot because being owned by the friends, it is owned by the community and the state pretty much. I don't think I realized 35 acres. There are 35 acres, yes, a property along with the mill. So I think, uh, you know, kind of where is those 35 acres? Because I think a lot of people think, well, it's just the mill right there because that's what you see. But obviously it's a lot bigger, broad, broad area. Right. We have the parking structure, parking lot across the street. The You know, there's a field right there. We, ha- we own that. And then we have the prop- piece of property that the mill sits on. But if you take the footbridge and go back the walking paths, you can walk along the Greenville Creek. And all of that is Bears Mills property, and it follows along the forestry and the wetlands and things like that. Um, we're trying to open some of it up because it is difficult to get to it by foot right now. You would have to walk through some water. But we do have um, area back there that we can develop, and that's one of the things we're looking at, how we can develop that, what we can do to best share it with the community and visitors. Um thinking about maybe a floating bridge because we ha- kind of have a little island area back there too. So. It will all be coming out, you know, sooner <laughs> um, rather than later. That's where we're kind of putting our focus right now to so see what we can do with what we have. So the future, again, looking bright, uh, but uh, kind of exciting to know um, that there is some light at the end of the tunnel, but you're not quite sure exactly yet. Exactly. And that's the whole focus with our strategic planning is we have, you know, this great piece of history sitting there that has um, roots in Dark County with our agriculture, you know, and our forefathers and everything here. So we want to keep that our main focus. But we also have all these sidearms. People love the nature. They love the birds and all of the critters and um the forestry, the trees, the different flowers and plants that are out there. You know, we, we're a small staff. We're only, I'm the only full-time person. And then we have three part-time staff and then some volunteer staff. So we really need to develop our volunteers too, so that we can get into those, you know, other niches. Um, Everyone loves the art at the mill series that we do. So we bring art to the mill as well. We have the mill store. So we have all these little different ways that we can go. And that's kind of what we're looking at. What can we do you know, in the future to bring the best of everything that's Bears Mill 
to our community. We'll talk a little bit about the art at the mill feature here shortly. Uh, you know, when tourism comes in, what's some of the uh, uh, common themes or common things you hear from uh, the tourists when they come in? And, you know, how surprised are they about what they actually see? Um, well, the first, the still the most popular thing is I live here in Greenville. I've lived here for, I'm just going to pick a number, 10 to 30 years, and I've never been here before. And then we'll say, well, what took you so long? You know, and they'll say, I don't know. Today I was just out here. I saw the sign. It reminded me, or I was out and about with people that were visiting, and I thought I'd share it, but I've never been here either. You know, so we still hear that a lot. Um, people that are coming in, they come and if they look at the website or they look in tourism magazines or a Dark County Visitor's Guide, you know, they can see it, but they really don't fully understand what's inside. And probably the best comment that we've gotten is, I thought it was just a mill, maybe just a shell of a mill with the inner workings. But once they get in there and they do the tour and they see that we do have all the gears, the pulleys, the wheels, that all of the milling equipment still works and functions, that we still grind our flowers and meals today when they see the mill store and gallery when they take nature walks you know when they it's the whole experience i think that makes bears mill unique over some of the other uh, mills that might still be standing but are not fully functioning and uh, it definitely is a very unique uh building and little uh, feature there uh real quick uh, where is bears mill located at we are at 6450 Arcana Bears Mill Road, and we're about five miles east of Greenville, just past the uh, Turtle Creek, the golf course right there. And um, just take a right onto Arcana Bears Mill Road, go down over the bridge, and we're right there on the right, nestled by the Greenville Creek. Again, we're talking uh, with Mary Niekamp uh, with Bears Mill, and uh, we've talked about uh, some of the things with tourism and uh, what has happened since the sale in October. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Art at the Mill and who they have coming in uh, next weekend. A real uh, cool artist and uh, some neat features they're going to bring into the uh, mill. So make sure and stay tuned. It's Community Ties talking about Bears Mill on Arcana Bears Mill Road on Tiger Country WTGR. The Community Ties program continues with Alex Micus on Tiger Country 97.5 WTGR. Again, Scott Ward with you in for Alex Micus on the Community Ties here on this Tuesday, 17th day of June. Our guest again this morning is Mary Niekamp with uh, Bears Mill. And again, we've talked about uh, some things and tourism, but now I think we need to talk a little bit about uh, a nice little series come up. It's called uh, Program Art of the Art at the Mill. And uh, you've got two pretty neat artists coming in. We do. Um, for folks that have never been to the Art at the Mill receptions, Art at the Mill is a nine-month rotating artist series that we do annually. It starts um, at the end of March and goes through the end of December. And we receive funding uh, to support the program from the Dark County Endowment for the Arts, uh, what we have in the past. And um, it's a fun series. Every month we have two artists, one a 2D, one a 3D, and they bring in their works. And it's exhibited in our mill gallery. And on the final Friday of the month, we have both of the artists there and we'll open up at 6 o'clock in the evening for a reception with the artists. And it's free to the public. Um, we have somebody that donates appetizers and wine, coffee, water, and it's just an opportunity to come in, see the exhibit, talk to the artists, ask questions about their passions, why they're doing what they're doing, how they got started. It's really great for the high school kids and students. A lot of the art teachers will bring them in, and um, it's a chance for us to talk to our membership, talk to new people that are coming in. It's win-win for both the mill and the artists in that um, we share our information and this information with all of our membership and our mailing list, and then they provide us with a mailing list as well. So we are sending out to about 2,000 people a month about the Art at the Mill series, and then anything that the artists sell – the Friends of Bears Mill also gets a commission for it too. So it, it, it is, we're opening up exposure for them, and they're helping us in our mission as well to keep the mill open. So it's really nice. Um, next Friday, June 27th, from 6 to 9, we'll have the reception with Bobby Rosenstock and Michael Nisley. And Bobby is from the Marietta area, and he is doing woodcut and letterpress art. And Michael is a Dark County guy. He is doing cigar box guitars. Um, something he does here locally from Arcana. 
And uh, on this postcard is a picture of those, and it's really cool. It's a cigar box that is actually uh, made uh, with the guitar, and uh, it's got the strings and everything on it. Uh, a pretty cool piece of uh, art right there. It is. It's very, very unique. Um, and what Rosenstock is doing, too, uh, his posters and everything are the woodcut letterpress that you saw of old days. And everything is very cool looking. Together, I think it'll make a really unique exhibit. So we encourage everybody to come out and take in what they're what they're sharing with our community. Again, that's next Friday, June 27th from uh, 6 until 9. And the uh, artists will speak at 7 o'clock, correct? Right, yes. And so they will speak there at 7 o'clock. Uh, you know, with this, um, you guys are always looking for volunteers for a Bears Mill. Right. For instance, um, just using the Art at the Mill series, a lot of times we have students come in. We've got a couple girls right now that are art students at uh, Greenville, Ball State. They've been coming in. They help Julie set up the displays, get all the exhibits ready. They'll do our chalkboard announcing the Art at the Mill series or some of our events. Um, we have volunteers that donate the food and drinks and everything for the reception. And then we have volunteers that come pour and staff that evening too, um, help us out there. So that's just one event that takes a series of volunteers. And everything we do at Bears Mill requires volunteers, from bagging the flowers and the meals to getting um, merchandise on the shelves, holding our events and fundraisers, and then helping with administrative things too, like mailings, flyers, that kind of thing, getting everything in the mail. Uh, we are always in need of volunteers. Gardening, we could use a guy that comes out and lawn mows too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyhow. Exactly. Um, you mentioned, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about, uh, you know, with the volunteering, but uh, any type of donations is uh, well receptive too. Right. Um, 50% of the income that helps keep the mill open comes from the mill store and gallery proceeds. And then the other 50% comes from grant funding, individual contributions, corporate contributions, and then our donation little bins that are all over. And the largest of those contribution sectors is the individual. And that's what keeps us open. Um, we may have gotten an acquisition grant to purchase the mill from the Clarks, but that's all that grant was for. So we need to impress upon the community in order for us to stay open, free of charge, and to keep the mill there for years to come, we rely on support from individuals, corporate, grant. That's what keeps us there. Shopping, attending our events and fundraisers. Again, that, that's all at our, out at the uh, Bears Mill on our Cannon Bears Mill Road. I forgot to mention that one event that's coming up uh, on July 16th. Right. We're doing a collaborative event. Uh, last year was the first time that we did the, the first little section of this, and it was a kids lunch and learn program that we did with the Dark County Farm Bureau. And we used um, wheat flour and did a healthy pizza crust with the kids. We helped them make it using our local KitchenAid mixers. And they made their pizzas, and then they baked them in the wood-fired pizza oven that we have out there and they ate with us and then they toured the mill in the grounds and it was a really great uh, collaborative effort teaching the kids to cook at, at the same time as eating healthy and then in the evening um, we will have chef Jeff B. Secker from the old Arcana there and he will be doing um, the cooking series with the homegrown in Dark County and he'll be preparing some kind of an entree and doing a demonstration with chicken so that's on July 16th. Uh, the class, I think, is going to be from 11 to 1. And then the evening, I think, starts at 6 or 7 o'clock. Now, do uh, people need to pre-register for this or just show up? Um, the It will be pre-registration for both. And um, it will be through the Dark County Farm Bureau. You can call me for questions at 548-5112. But I will probably direct you to Mandy Havenar at the Dark County Farm Bureau. Okay. Um, where is, uh, I guess, more information about Bears Mill? Um, you guys are on the web, and what type of hours do you guys have? We are on the web at bearsmill.com. We're open seven days a week right now through the end of the year uh, from 11 to 5. Uh, only days coming up that will be closed will be closed on the 4th of July in honor of Independence Day, and then we'll be closed, um, you know, typical Christmas, Thanksgiving, that kind of thing. And you can find us on Historic Bears Mill Facebook as well. Okay. Anything else this morning? Uh, no, that's it. Thanks for giving me the time this morning to share us with the community. Again, uh, the next uh, big uh, Art at the Mill reception, Friday, June 27th from 6 to 9. Bobby Rosenstock, uh, woodcut and letter press art, along with Michael Nisley from uh, Dark County, be uh, showing off his cigar box guitars. Uh, 
Uh, Mary, we appreciate you coming in this morning and talking about some upcoming events and reminding people that uh, Bears Mill, it's right outside of uh, Greenville and right here in Dark County. Thanks for letting us share it with the Dark County community. Again, Mary Camp with the Bears Mill just off of uh, State Route 36 on our Cannon Bears Mill Road. It's going to wrap up our community ties for today. Tomorrow, our guests will be uh, folks of Bradford talking about the uh, railroad. They have an event coming up this weekend. You can find out more details again about that. That'll be tomorrow, just after our 11 o'clock news. Also this week, Rhonda Williams with OSU Extension Office and the Dark County Commissioners will be in studio on Friday answering your questions. If you have a question you would like to have answered by the commissioners, all you have to do is email dcc975 at wtgr.com. We'll get that question to the commissioners, and they'll be able to answer to you for you on Friday.